Flying Paintings, The Joe Brothers, A Story of Revolution and Art. At first, there was only one brother. He was not even a brother yet, just Shao Li, born in the back of a bookstore on the highest hill in Wuming, China. All around him, books lay quietly on the tables, and out the window, mountains waded by the water. His grandmother, Popo, told him stories of paintings that once flew through the air and still lived on these mountain cliffs. She also told stories of violence. Bandits and then soldiers destroyed the store, she said. Twice they built it up again. The world is a beautiful and terrible place, thought Xiao Li. Soon, another boy, Xiao Ning, arrived. He cried in his mother's arms so long and hard that Xiao Li had to cover his ears and hide. A brother, too, is a beautiful and terrible thing, he thought. But now he was not alone. In no time, two brothers raced in the garden with slingshots and bare feet. Two brothers sat together looking out the window or learning to copy bamboo and plum blossoms with brushes and ink. Shaoli loved to watch petals from one book float through his brush and bloom again on a blank page. He also loved to kick Xiaoning, sitting so close and Xiao Ning loved to kick back. To become an artist, Popo told them, you must possess the highest spirit. But the New People's Republic of China did not appreciate the high spirits of people who ran their own stores and made their own art. They threw the brother's father into a labor camp and later their mother into prison. They came and burned all the books, turning the words and paintings to ash. Even art, thought Xiao Li in tears, is beautiful and terrible. Popo finally closed the bookstore and moved the family into a hut near the damming mountain. Soon Xiao Li was sent to work on the mountain itself. Again, Xiao Li was only one brother. Up on the mountain, he carried heavy loads with a pole balanced on his shoulders. Once, cutting firewood, he fell from the top of a pine and almost died. Yet he was allowed to paint, always the face of Chairman Mao, but at least he was painting. He thought of little Xiao Ning down in the village, hunting for bottles for recycling money practicing calligraphy on paper scraps. How shall Li long to sit with him and buy the smoke and the light of a cooking fire and listen to Popo's stories. Once there was an artist, he could almost hear her saying, who saw an immortal stepping down from the sky. The immortal said, if you paint for 100 days, I will make your paintings live. The artist worked and worked, and then one day, the door opened, images flew off his canvas and danced across the river, onto the Hushuan Cliffs. Xiao Li dreamed of making his own paintings that would fly free. Four years passed. Beloved Popo died. Finally, there were two brothers again, and together they went to find the old bookstore. With the attic gone and the paint peeling, the bookstore seemed to be weeping for Popo. In sorrow, Xiao Li began to sketch. Xiao Ning sketched too. Soon flowers bloomed on the blank walls. What if we make a painting together, said Xiao Li. He sketched the crest of a wave. Xiao Ning took his brush and changed how the water swelled. How dare you destroy my work, Xiao Li said. But then he looked.
looked, the painting was better now. Side by side they worked, like two little boys again, painting and fighting. Finally they stood back to see what they had made, two figures riding in a little boat on crashing waves. It is like the world and like our lives, said Chowning. Yes, said Chowley, terrible and beautiful. If together with their brushes they could sail out on a stormy sea or turn a sad house into a garden, they had to keep painting, but how? The government didn't approve of art like theirs, which put them in danger. Popo's voice came to them. To become an artist, you must possess the highest spirit. They applied to school after school. Finally, an art school in Shanghai accepted Xiao Li, but not Xiao Ning. Xiao Li sent art supplies home. Xiao Ning sent letters back. What is left for me is only loneliness, he wrote. Then one day there was a knock on Xiao Li's door. It was Xiao Ning. Now two brothers acted as a single artist. By day, Xiao Li attended classes. By night, Xiao Ning snuck into the studio and drew the required figures until dawn. But it was not enough. They wanted to be free, to paint not what they were supposed to paint, but what they felt. Yet once school ended, they still had no money, no place to work, and no idea how to capture that wild feeling in their own art. Again, Popo came to them. Once an artist saw an immortal stepping down from the sky. Yes, they would return home and go see the cliff paintings. Perched in a rowboat or up on a bamboo ladder, they spent days copying the ancient figures. Some looked joyful, dancing and drumming, and some angry, holding knives. Living on raw fish and wild plants, they sketched and sketched until the images entered their dreams and mixed with their own joy and anger. And their dreams grew until they seemed to be catching up everything. The little bookstore Popo, their lost family, and all their years of toil and hope. In a frenzy to paint their dreams, the brothers found a dusty warehouse and worked in secret day and night always side by side, on the same canvas. Sometimes they were joyful, moving as if part of the same body. Sometimes they waged a little war. You have ruined my work, cried Xiao Li. No, you have destroyed everything, cried Xiao Ni. But they always found a way to go on together. Around this time, China was changing. The government began to celebrate not just paintings of Chairman Mao, but ancient Chinese art and modern art from Europe and America. When, so when Xiao Li and Xiao Ning finally opened their warehouse door, it was as if the wild images came to life and flew out into the world. Each canvas was a battle of paint that transformed what was once two into a single dance, what was old into something new, and what was terrible into something beautiful. Today, the Zhao brothers are work world-renowned artists. They work together in a brick studio in Bridgeport, Chicago. Often it reminds them of the bookstore that once stood on the highest hill in Wu Ming. Inside, paintings hang quietly on the walls. Outside, instead of mountains, Buildings fill the sky, and here, too, sometimes violence flares. But often people walk inside and study their paintings so long and hard that the images lift off the canvases and enter into their own dreams. And here is a photo of the brothers. They're standing in front of the Hushuan Mountains, where the cliff paintings still dwell. Thanks so much for listening, everyone.